Hey there, it's Aviva from Elementor. Welcome back to how to build a website in Elementor. In the previous lesson, we created the Our Menu page, covered new widgets, and sharpened our web building techniques. In this lesson, we'll complete the website by creating the Contact Us page, go over widget positioning, and learn new website optimization methods. We'll also conclude the course with a review and suggest the next steps for you to take in your Elementor journey. Let's open the Contact Us page we created earlier in the course. Hit Command or Control E to open the Finder and type Contact. Notice that the Contact page isn't found. That's because in order for it to display, we need to first convert the contact page into an Elementor page. To do this, click Exit to Dashboard, go back to Pages, find the Contact Us page, and click to open it. Then click the Edit with Elementor button. From now on, we'll be able to find this page using the Elementor Finder. The first thing we'll need to do is add the template of the Hero section we created previously. Click the gray folder icon and the My Templates tab. Hover over the template and click Insert. Great! Change the subheading and the heading text. Then select the spacer and in the Advanced tab, change the background image. Now go ahead and delete the other elements, as they're not needed in this page. Next, add an intersection. And right-click here to add one more column. This will be where we'll add the contact information, phone number, and location. From the Widget menu, find and drag an image box into the first column. Update the image, add a title, and description. Next, in the Style tab, change the image width. Under Content, set the title color to Basil, and change the typography to Button Text. And we're done with our first column. From the Advanced tab, we'll add some padding. To do this, Uncheck the linked values, select percent for the unit, and add some padding. Right click on the column and duplicate it twice. Now delete the empty columns. Update the content of the second image box. And apply different colors. Repeat this process for the last one. And just like that, we've completed this section. As I mentioned in the previous lesson, using fewer elements such as columns and sections auto-generates less code on your web pages, allowing them to load faster. So next we'll take a look at how we can optimize this section and recreate it without using an intersection and three columns. While this step is optional, I encourage you to give it a try to get a better understanding of these optimization techniques. So let's do it. Right click on the first image box and duplicate it. Now, drag it directly under the spacer. By default, every widget takes up 100% of the available column's width. The blue outline shows the extent of the widget's width. Dragging in the second image box, places it below the first widget, since at 100% the first image box pushes the second image below it. However, in the Advanced tab, you will have the option to change any widget's width. Under Positioning, you'll see Width, where you have a number of options. Full Width, which is the same as the default. Inline, which resizes the widget to the width of its content. And Custom, which gives you the freedom to set the width of your choice. We'll select Custom 
so we can set the three widgets to have equal space between them, like the original three column layout we created before. Now we know that a column takes up 100% of the available space. So by changing the unit to percent and typing in 100, the image box widget will continue to take up 100% of the column space. By changing it to 50, the image box will take up half of the column's width. If we change the second widget's width to 50, You can see they now fit side by side in the column. I think you can see where I'm going with this. Since we have three widgets, we'll need each of them to take up one third of the column's width. So set the value to 33.3%. Great. Now do the same for the second one. Now go ahead and duplicate the third widget here and drag it above the intersection. In Advanced, under Positioning, give this image box the same value. Perfect. We've now created the exact same layout for this section, but without the need for the intersection widget and with two columns fewer. As you continue to gain experience building websites in Elementor, you'll start to find yourself coming up with new approaches to building websites in more optimal ways. So if you'd like to give your web pages a boost, go ahead and give optimized layout a shot. Next, let's delete the intersection now that we no longer need it. The page looks great, so let's enter responsive mode to make sure that everything displays correctly. Using the keyboard shortcut, Command Shift M will take you directly into tablet view. Okay. Everything already looks great here, so let's switch to mobile. The widgets display next to each other here as well, but it's a bit tight for this view, so let's space them out to make them more visible. Select the first image box, and in Advanced, under Positioning, you'll notice the mobile viewport icon. As you'll recall, this indicates that any changes made to this setting will display only at this viewport size, since it's the smallest breakpoint. Set it to full width. Repeat this step for the second. And third image box. Great, let's preview it. Congratulations, you've now completed building your first website in Elementor. Well done. So let's recap what we've learned and take a tour of the site. We got started by installing and activating the Hello theme, creating our website pages, and adding a navigation menu. With that done, we went on to set up our website's design system and structure, including our header and footer. We then dove full force into the Elementor editor to build the home page our menu page, and contact us page, complete with responsive edits. And throughout the course, we covered lots of other tips and tricks to make your website building process more efficient and effective. Now you know how to create a professional website from start to finish without using a single line of code. Great job. If you'd like to further advance your skills, you'll find links in the description to some of our many resources, including a playlist dedicated to the Elementor widgets, a video on responsive editing, optimization lessons, and even a full course of building a website using Elementor Pro features. Go check them out. I hope you enjoyed this course and feel confident in using Elementor to design, build, and publish websites for your own business or customers. As always, check out the Elementor Academy for more tips and tutorials. Till next time, thanks for watching.